Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This is the Moonstone Mamas. My name is Devin, and today I'm doing something a little bit out of the ordinary than the old run-of-the-mill jewelry unboxing. I'm going to take you through how I test my jewelry, test silver. Some of the things that I'm going to use today, especially with dealing with acids, is gloves. Chemical safe gloves, gloves that are going to protect your hands. Um, you're also going to need some Q-tips. Uh, this is a fun little find, and I'll tell you more about this uh, tip later. Um, if you don't have any tampons, you can use cotton balls. Um, I have my rouge cloth. I've got my loop. I've got my handy dandy magnet. And then for the testing kit, I have my little caddy over here. This is your testing block, as you can see, I already kind of scratched. So um, the first thing that I like to do um, when I get my testing block out to test is put my kids to sleep um, when it's their nap time um, because I don't want my children to be around. So uh, most of the time I end up having a humongous pile of stuff to test because I don't like testing when my kids are awake. Uh, another important thing to have is a testing kit. So this is your acid testing kit. You can purchase this off of Amazon, eBay, um, wherever your heart desires, but you wanna get one that's gonna test for silver, most importantly. Um, now, you may notice that when I pull out my silver acid, it is different than all of the other labeled ones. That is because I use it the most, and here it is, and I've had to repurchase from eBay. The first thing I like to do and the first thing I recommend you do is clean your block. So uh, this is where the tampons come into play. I was trying to figure out a way, let's first put on our gloves. I was trying to figure out a way to clean my board, minimal waste, and something that I already had that I didn't have to kind of makeshift to do. I've got my gloves on. I'm gonna move my magnet or any kind of metal. I have my tampon here, I'm gonna open it up. And I'll show you how, um, how I clean my board when I don't have a tampon or if you're scared of uh, tampons or whatever. Here's a tampon. Uh, also a cotton ball or paper towels, whatever tickles your pickle. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, um, normally I would use platinum um, but I'm out of platinum, as you can see. So I just take something um, that will take off my, any kind of scratches on here that will dissolve. And you wanna use a liberal amount. And the reason I've, I enjoyed the tampon is that you can hold the cardboard and you don't have to touch the acid. Um, so I take the literal tampon and I just swirl. And your main thing is wanting to get rid of all of the etchings that you have made from your previous scratches. So then once I feel like I have all of these scratches off, then I pull the tampon out a little bit and I go over and wipe the excess. Now this is also a handy dandy trick. You pull the cord back in. There it is. Cord's covering it and you can toss this. Not without having to touch any of the acid. Of course the acid's going to dissolve into the cardboard but the cardboard's thick enough that I could just put this in a baggie and throw this away. So that is what I'm going to do. So it's important to let this completely air dry. You do not want any other kind of acid on here so you can see as I tip it a little bit it's still very much wet so while this is drying I'll go ahead and show you a few more things and you want to make sure the lid is closed tight on the acid that you just used to knock it over and have a problem so 
A couple of different pieces that I have for you are pieces that I know for sure are not silver, but for purposes of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you so that you know what you're looking for. Testing is one of those things that is going to re require a lot of practice and a lot of hands-on. You can't be afraid to damage your jewelry and you can't be afraid to scratch this board. You have to scratch it hard because you wanna make sure that, let's just say this ring, it's not magnetic, it's not picking up. You gotta wonder, is it heavily silver plated or is it actually pure sterling silver? Uh, and I mean pure, it's not plated. So um, if you have one that's like this, and as you can see, it's pretty black, pretty tarnished. I usually tend to take my rouge cloth and I'll clean around the inside of the band, clean around the bottom of the base of the ring, um, because you gotta take into consideration that if you're spending all this time on a ring that may not be sterling and may not be worth your time, you wanna kind of figure out a method best used for you so that you're not wasting your time on an item that you're gonna charge $6 for, for as opposed to like $26. So bear that in mind, time is money. So that's basically how I kind of look at things. So we're gonna check on our board. You see it's, it's getting there, it's a little dry. If you're impatient, you can fan it because basically you're just gonna wanting the acid to dissolve because like I said, you're not gonna use your board when it's wet. You wanna use it when it's completely dry, when the acid's dissolved. So in cases like this, because I'm an impatient Irma, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my board down a little bit with these cotton balls. Now I took two. As you can see, I'm pinching the top and I'm moving it side to side. No acid contact. I'm gonna use the same baggie that I put a tampon in. You can see it's not a lot of transfer, not a lot of absorption, and I'm gonna toss it. As you can see, it's getting there. It's a little bit better. There's still a little reflection. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, and I'm gonna take my Q-tips. You wanna get a bunch of these and have them close by you. For purposes of this video, I'm going to show you a scratch with a piece that I know is 100%, without a doubt, sterling silver. So I'm gonna take this ring here. I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna hold it in such a way where, and you may have to pull your glove back and that's okay too, in such a way where your glove is not gonna interfere with your scratching. And this may rock and shake the camera because it's on a tripod, but I'm telling you, you are not going to hurt your jewelry. Um, you're not gonna hurt your scratching board. You need to get in there and scratch hard. So here I go. And of course, I wanna be kind of smart about it. And sometimes I, um, and what I mean smart about it is take your time and you don't wanna scratch a huge scratch because just a little bit will do ya. you. Want, you wanna kind of be strategic in placing it so you don't have to clean your board a hundred times because you see how long it took for it to dry. I'm gonna take this and you wanna do it in an inconspicuous place. You're not gonna wanna do it right on top of your stones here. That's not a good idea. Because as you can see, you're not going to affect your jewelry, but you're gonna leave a little bit of a mark on it. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So, I'm taking my jewelry, I'm taking my glove, I'm pulling it back, I'm holding the ring in such a way that it's, my glove is not going to scratch and wipe away the mark. So, I'm trying to do this in the best way I can so you can see. You want a good scratch. Now, that's this mark right here is what I did. And you can see kind of sort of the flakes here. And if I rub it with my glove, you can see there's kind of some residue, but I did not affect the ring in any way. Now I'm gonna take the board, I'm gonna move it closer. And that is how I scratched it. I definitely recommend that if you're gonna scratch a piece of jewelry, after you scratch it, you already should have your loop out, so easy access. I like this loop because it has a light. You wanna take it and pull it up and look, look through your loop and look at the spot where you scratched. If you see orange underneath, then you know right off the bat we're plated with copper underneath. It's got a copper base metal. If there's any other kind of color than silver when you scratch it underneath, then chances are it's not sterling silver maybe silver plated, it may be metal alloy, um, it may be some kind of plating. But for this purpose right here, 
I know this is sterling silver. I'm gonna show you right here. Um, I'm gonna take my sterling silver acid. If you're testing for silver, you're gonna scratch the object on the stone, apply a scratch with the object, drop silver testing solution and watch for a reaction. And so if it's fine silver, it'll be bright red, 925 dark red, 800 brown, 500 green. So even though this is not one that I purchased in the kit, this is one that it's just a general sterling silver test. You really, all you need is just one dab and that's why it's really important to wear gloves. This is where the Q-tip comes in. It's important and I can just go ahead and wipe this away because that's your extra and be mindful that if you're gonna scratch in this area, it's already had acid on it. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side as used. And then we're gonna take the Q-tip and we're gonna rub it. Now you can see the color on here is your dark brick red. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what you're looking for for sterling silver. Anything that is not in or around this color area is not sterling silver. So it is so sterling silver that it's the color is remaining. And as you can see here, when I just wipe the acid a little bit, you get a little bit on the tip here that's still red, but it's still holding the color. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. I can use the other, you could definitely use the other tip and that's what I'm gonna do. So for all intents and purposes and for reference purposes, this is sterling silver and that is what you're gonna look for. So I had another ring that was in question, which if you saw one of my last unboxings, you'll notice that I picked this one up. I did my test, which is, is it magnetic or not? I went ahead and I attempted to look all throughout the band here and I didn't see any kind of markings that would indicate sterling. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to test the band and see if it's sterling. So I'm gonna do the same thing, be mindful of my location. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna hold it in such a way where my gloves are not gonna interfere with the scratch. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use force and I'm gonna scratch. So here we go. I'm gonna bring this up and you're gonna see I did not harm the jewelry. I can see underneath right away that there's no copper showing underneath. There's no brown showing underneath. This may be silver. This may be heavily silver plated, but um, I usually do a preliminary test and then I go back and test it again because I just really like to be sure that what I'm going to sell someone is for sure sterling silver. So again, I'm gonna take my sterling silver acid and just a little dabble do ya. And you don't wanna have the tip of the plastic be in contact with your stone. You're just, you just wanna kinda hover above it and do a little squeeze. So here we go. Of course, you wanna put the lid back on it. Since these have dried a little bit, I'm gonna take the other side of my Q-tip and I'm gonna do the rub test with it. So here we go. And that right there is sterling silver. So rock and roll, found a piece of sterling silver. Now another piece that I came across was this guy right here. This is marked 925. Um, I've come across a few pieces that are marked 925, but when I acid tested them, they were not sterling silver at all. They were sterling silver plated. So even if something says 925, that doesn't necessarily mean it's sterling silver. So we're gonna take a spot on this pendant here that's you know, you don't want to scratch right on this heart here because as you've seen before, it does kind of leave a, a shiny sheen to it. I'm going to hold it in such a way where my glove is not going to scratch away what I've just done. And I'm going to go ahead and scratch. And like I said, get in there. Do not be afraid. So I'm going to take it and normally I would look through a loop. And I would look at this really good and I would try to see if there's any underlying color. Now all I see is silver and right here is where I've scratched it. Here's my test spot. Here's my pendant. I'm gonna take my acid here 
I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna place a little dot on here. Twist my cap, make sure it's secure. And I'm gonna give that a second for the reaction to occur. I'm gonna take my Q-tip that I used this side on and I'm gonna use the other side. As you can see, it has not been used. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna run it over it. So, this, ladies and gentlemen, is sterling silver. Nice. Now I kinda wonder if these are precious stones in here. I'll have to take a gander at that after we clean it. So cool. It's not magnetic, but I kind of feel in my gut that it either may be silver plated or something along those lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it, put it on the block, and we'll see what it comes up with. You wanna pay attention to the way it feels when you scratch it. You wanna pay attention to the way it sounds when you scratch it. So the more you become familiar with um, testing and getting more brave with that, then you'll be able to get an idea just when putting it on the board before even putting the acid on it, scratching it on the board, what possibly may be sterling silver or not if you're a reseller um, and you're making this your mission to learn more about it. I had to look at this up close a little bit because the way I had it, depending on if it was reflecting or anything, it kind of, as you can kind of see when I tilt it a certain way, it kind of looks like there's maybe copper in here, especially when I rub the glove, you can see that there's kind of like a amber color come off. So this may be silver plated, uh, we have to see. You can kind of tell right off the bat that this one's giving a little bit more of a redder hue um, than these which are coming off really, really, really silver in color. So here's our test item. Here's the silver, kind of scoot it really tough there. I'm gonna drop just a little bit there. That was a little too much, but that's okay. I'm gonna put it back, make sure I have the cap on it. So I'm gonna take my Q-tip, and as you can see, my Q-tip is white. And I'm gonna go ahead and rub it. Now it's not a red, red, red like these are. It's an orange. So I can tell you right off the bat, it is not sterling silver. It's not bright red. There is no kind of brick color. It is not sterling. So this was one that uh, is another one that I got from a jewelry unboxing. And it was, the clasp is magnetic, but all these other guys are non-magnetic. I'm gonna tell you, in my short time working with jewelry and testing jewelry, chains are one of the hardest ones to test because you have to scratch it and you have to scratch it hard. And it's kind of painful to do, I'm not going to lie. You have to take it and you have to wrap it around your finger and have it in such a way where the glove is not gonna wrap and smudge your scratch and it has to pick up just the metal. So right here, we're gonna be testing the metal. This was non-magnetic. So I'm gonna hold it in such a way where I'm gonna to try to wrap it multiple times. You're not trying to cut off circulation. You're just trying to wrap it like I said, in such a way where the glove is not going to make a difference on your smudge mark. So I'm gonna take this area and I'm going to rub it hard. No sissy rubbing on this, you gotta do it. So I'm gonna take it and rub it. Now this is a bigger one. And you're gonna get this, uh, you know, bigger spot because you just hit it with a big chunk of metal. You can kind of see here in the bottom, it has a little bit of an orangey tinge that kind of makes me feel like maybe this would be silver plated or um, some kind of metal alloy. So I'm gonna take it and when you're doing, the, doing this, it's important to watch what you're doing to realize the different colors on here. So these three items right here where we scratched were sterling silver, but you can still see the residue of the scratch. And you can see the color difference just from here and here, and even from here and here. So nonetheless, 
I'm gonna go ahead and use my acid, take it and drop it on the most scratched area. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on, stick it over here so we're not just gonna knock it. And we're gonna let this react, for lack of a better word. We're gonna take a look at our item. We're gonna see if there's any telltales like I just saw. Um, because different lighting means everything. Sometimes when I do an unboxing, it's late at night so that um, you don't hear the pitter patter of my little children's feet. Um, and when you put it things in different light, you can see things. That's why it's important that even though you may think something was junk, go back and look at your junk pile or your crafters pile three or four different times because you may find a treasure that you thought maybe was trash before. So I'm gonna take the other side of the Q-tip that has not been used. Here we go. And rub it. Now same thing happened. It turned a little orange in color and it's dissipating quickly. It is not a brick red color that was sterling silver. So you can see there is no indication of any kind of brick red in color here. So this right here is not sterling silver. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish wrapping up testing. Um, you've seen how I clean my board. I definitely recommend that when you get all of your testing done, um, you go ahead and you clean your board again. And what I like to do is I like to take a piece of paper towel or some kind of tissue paper and wrap your board into it. Um, you wanna take care of your board. Your board is your friend. Your board is either gonna tell you whether you've got gold, silver, or something of non-value but value to someone else. So take care of your board, take care of your hands, take care of yourself. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any tips, tricks, or any other information you'd like to provide. Um, as co of course, I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified as to when I upload a new video or go live. Hope to see you soon. Bye guys.